All right, so I'm, I'm, I'm up next. Not sure why, but for the first time in this story, I felt bad for Mike during this chapter. I would love to hear all your thoughts. Was this necessary, what Chan did? Do I sound believable? Y'all know I don't feel bad for no damn Mike. <laughs> when I saw a curious face, my, my whole computer was about to have copy. <laughs> right. Oh, uh, uh, I'm like, okay, I'm going to just power, power through this. Um, I don't <laughs> I'm like, did Corwin send this question in? <laughs> Right. <laughs> right. Shoot. That that is right up his alley too. Um, no, I don't feel bad for Mike. He needed this. He needed to be graciously gathered and he was. Uh slam dunked in a bowl of soup and he needed all that. All of it. Um <laughs> so uh yeah, it was necessary, I guess, to Chan. Um, you know, he probably He's already trying to deal with the Chris situation. Um, and so, yeah, he got it. He's, I guess he feels he's being protective, but I think in a little ways, you know, cause Mike is fine. He got his shit together. You know, um, they're, there's the, you know, they're both African American and he's, you know, uh, he, he's Asian. So he probably could see like, oh, okay. And she has a past with him. So she, he could be actually worried about that. Like, hold on, maybe he can tiptoe back in her life. Let me eliminate this, this mofo real quick, you know? Um, and so, yeah, that's, that, that's my thoughts is I don't think personally it was necessary, but for Chan, it was more than necessary. <laughs> so, um, yeah, those, the, those are my thoughts. Uh, I will second that uh, slam dunk in a bowl of soup. He needed all. And quite frankly, I don't, he got enough. He deserves way more. So, you know, I'm looking forward to the dumpster that he's going to be thrown into, hopefully in the near future, you know. And um, I don't agree, Alicia. Chan's not worried about anything. Chan is confident he's in control. And if he's not, he is going to figure out how he can regain his control. He ain't worried about my, my coup. Ooh, he can't even spell Mike. Mike is so irrelevant. <laughs> he maybe worried is in, you know, maybe it's just like a thought in the back of his mind, you know, because she did have a past with him. She's been with him. And I mean, he was maybe not worried, but concerned enough to turn off her phone and send somebody to the restaurant to beat him up. So. <laughs> I don't know. Maybe he thought on the back hand somewhere he would have a chance somewhere. You know, he needed to eliminate that. It's called controlling the narrative, you know? And then <laughs> let's say he didn't turn off her phone. Then her phone's going off. She's sitting there stressed out. She's ruining their time together. He can't fully have her attention because she's so caught up in the last Nick, you know, that did something. Chan, Chan needs all that energy and that attention on him. And he's not going to let no bum, you know, sidetrack his chick from doting on him. So that's what I feel like. And I don't feel like Malia's not, Malia's not dumb. She, she's not stupid. She can be a little bit naive. But as far as that turning off the phone, he can only lie so much. Oh, yeah, your phone died. As soon as she turns her phone on, she's going to see that full bar there. Like, you know, she, she just didn't say anything about it. She's going to let it slide. Be like, mm. I don't, mm, okay, okay, we, we're, this, is, this is the beginning, let me just, mm, you know, and then like you said, you know, when more and more things start happening, then it's all going to start piecing itself together later on down the road, but I think she noticed, you know, how, how are you not going to notice that you have a full bar when you turn your phone a back full, on? Right. You know, she just, yeah. She just didn't say anything about it. She let that one slide. She sure did. Lord Jesus, be a fence. Yeah, I, I definitely think she off and she like, mm, I don't know, maybe he died. Mm -hmm. Like, maybe it reset. Like, she kind of looked at him like, oh, oh, okay. You know, but I, I didn't feel like she believed him in that moment. I felt like she was like, okay, that was odd. But, um, All right. I, I See, this is the danger, ladies. This is what we do. Right? 
little red flags and stuff like that start to happen. My phone gets turned off and somebody's like, I left you a voicemail. I sent you a text. All that stuff been deleted off your phone. Okay. Uh, you know, just little, let, let, like letting little things go. Like, like One thing that I've learned as an adult, I'm not letting nothing little slide no more. Like I've let things slide and just turn into a monster, honey, a whole willy mammoth. Um, and it wanted to fight me, right? So we're not gonna do that anymore. So um, gotta call it out. But naive, you know, naive Malia, love my girl. But it's the it's, it's the new it's the newness of the relationship. It's the beginning. Everybody on the best year, honey. Every representative is showing up, honey, and showing out for the Lord. Okay. So I definitely think that Malia thing slide that she probably should be like, no, I yeah, babe, for God. I don't think that. She Look at it. Um, that's that for me. Now, like, but I felt what like I put myself in that position. What is right? He right? We have to do like let's be honest. Like if things was working out really good for him in you know Sacramento, North California, he would not have had to come home. If things were with with his wife and her family, if everything was panning out the way it was supposed to. Because remember, she was supposed to be a better pick, Miss Ortega. And now he didn't have to tuck his tail between his legs. You know, his mama had to help him get this job because she called a favor from somebody, right? So he got this job. Um, and he's feeling good about that, but he he's back home. And he's looking at what left of his, I feel like, you know, age category, right? He's like looking around at the women there and he's like, okay, a lot of, a lot of the most sought after women are already married. Um, who else is around here? You know, and Malia, you know, she's still a prize that, that nobody has knocked off, right? Like nobody has climbed that mountain. Okay, so he's like, perfect. Like, he's still available. Let me see if I can willy nill, you know, willy nilly myself back up in this space. The problem is, you're not dealing with, you know, an 18 year old girl anymore. You're not dealing with a 20 year old girl anymore. Like, you're dealing with, a grown woman who's been on her own for quite some time and has done some healing, right? And the last place that you've last seen her in where she was emotionally damaged, she was hurt, she was, whatever you say, I just want to be agreeable. Um, she's past that point now, baby. She paid her own bills, you know what I'm saying? She ain't worried about you, you know? You don't know now. So um, he, he still doesn't know that side of her though. You know, yeah, baby, trick daddy. Um, he still doesn't know her. Like he's still trying to this new Malia. He knows she, you know, she didn't cuss him out. He knows she got with his program a few times. So banking on her to be the old, you know, her. Fine, I'm gonna go. I'm gonna get dressed. I'm gonna show up and I'm gonna have something cute. Cause you know that's how women like to do. It. Like we like to play these little games, right? I'm getting closure. What I talked about closure is blocking that fool, right? The closure is changing your lives. The closure is unfriending him and all his friends. Like that is the closure that you need. Okay. The closure ain't, let me get my hair done and let me put this dress on and let me smell good in this Jimmy Choo perfume to let him know what he missed out on. Like, that's so childish to me. Like, but women, we love that type of stuff. I'm a show. The problem is what you might get to show up be like, but he was so vulnerable with me. And and I saw a different side. I'm like, see, this is why you can't play with fire. You feel me? Because you shouldn't have showed back up. Okay. So here we have Mike, who is fully anticipating Malia to show up looking so beautiful. Hair looking good. Skin just glowing all pretty and brown. He's waiting for it. You know, I think a part of him in his mind is like, will she come? Will she not come? And so he's like a little kid. You know, he knows that the ball is really not in his court, but he's hoping that with all his fineness and his new job position and his family background, like that's going to be like, well, let me see what he's talking at least and let me find out like what he's saying this week. Ain't nothing to hear, right? So do I feel bad for Mike? No. Um, I don't feel bad for him, but I feel him. You know what I'm saying? Like I, I could emotionally feel the pain. But it's pain that he inflicted upon himself. You feel me? Um, yeah, he did this to himself. So now he's he's sitting here thinking, will she come back? Will, will she be with me? And it's like, but why do you really want Malia? You know, like, why do you really want her? She's a status symbol. She's a trophy at this point. Um, I don't think it's just like, I feel so bad because I hurt her. Because we've already discussed in our recap, he wanted to send flowers to her. He didn't know her address. I don't know why he didn't call her mom. 
or her grandma, since they've been bumping their gums, right? He calls Erica, the arch nemesis. And then he tells, yeah, you know what I'm saying? Just go ahead and like order her something, whatever. I'll cash out you a little money. See, this is the problem that I have. You want somebody, but you're not willing to put in the work or the time or the effort to get that person back. You're, you're trying to cut all these corners and stuff. You don't love her. She is a trophy to display on your trophy case of other women who you have knocked off. You're not in love with her. So do I feel bad for him? No, but I do I feel his, his pain? I feel it, but it, it's necessary for him to feel like, what if she doesn't want me? What is that going to send a signal to all the other people in the community that I don't got the juice? No, you don't have the juice. You lost it a long time ago, okay? You don't have the juice no more. It's over. So, I think that will definitely be a sad, it's definitely something that's, I mean, damn, he must have really had it because, like, she didn't even move on. Like, she ain't been with nobody. She had a little dudes in there, gave him a little one or two dates, but nothing. She's just been waiting on him. Everybody's like, he must really got that type of hold on her. I mean, dang. No, it's not. It, it's not a status, you know, because she kept herself from me just in case it didn't work out with me and my wife. Nobody kept themselves for you, sir. Nobody kept themselves. Do I feel like Mike felt bad? Yeah, I felt he felt bad. But I feel like he needed to have that moment of reflection. For the first time in his life, he's scared. He's never not had what he wanted. So I feel for him, but I'm glad he's feeling it. Like, I, 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 I love that for him. You know, I love him part of that. Um, necessary for Chan to do what he did? Absolutely. Um, at least he's dunked in a bowl of soup because a whole fight does break out. Like, when we say that Chan showed up and gave him that work, baby, he got that work. He got them once and he got them twos, baby. He got that to his face, okay? And there was a scene where he tries to uh, swing at one of the men and gets his arm twisted behind his back and gets his face slammed in a bowl of soup. Was it necessary? Oh, absolutely. Because that, that's that's part of that crushing his ego thing, right? He needs to humble thyself before that before the almighty. <laughs> you know what I mean? So I think it was necessary. I mean, like, violence is not the answer. Next question. I love the way they were sitting there eating his appetizers when he came in from outside. <laughs> I was so hurt. If I come back from the bathroom and I eat my calamari, oh, it's going to be a problem. <laughs> yeah, you let me come into the restaurant and I see somebody sitting in my chair and me licking the fingers too. And then gonna wipe his greasy fingers on my new suit that I just got. My new Italian suit that I just got. Ooh, disrespectful. Okay. <laughs> Mike, all of that. Like when we tell you that, like when we tell you to read the highlights, too, it's like Curie was saying. So when Mike had been sitting at the Leah, he was ordering drink after drink after drink. They were trying to get him to be like, sir, are you sure your party is coming? Because if not, like, we're really busy, really need this table. And uh, he's like, no, she's coming, uh, you know. And so at this point, anxiety is building and he has to leave. He's like, let me just step outside. Let me try to call her phone again. It's going directly to voicemail because remember, Chan turned it off, right? He's outside. He's trying to collect his thoughts, trying to get some cool air. He comes walking back in to the restaurant and Chan's men are sitting at the table and they have demolished his appetite. Like he's only out there five minutes. They ate up all the food and they was really enjoying themselves. Like they were licking and sucking their fingers. Like, thank you for that. Mm -hmm. Needed a good little snack. I mean, it was, just, it, it was insult to injury. And then as they were talking like, okay, well, we've enjoyed your dinner. Um, we were sitting here by Mr. Kong and he said for you to leave Malia alone. And one of the guys, you know, you know, he walked away trying to be a little smart and like, no, he was like, oh, my hands are dirty. Your suit will do nicely. And he just wipes his hand, <laughs> his greasy, dirty fingers all over Mike's brand new suit. I mean, and the book started off by saying that he wanted this night to be perfect. He decided he wanted to get a new little you know, suit. And he had it all nicely tailored to his body, you know, at all. You know, arms, everything, honey, it's, it's, it's given, right? He gets his new suit ruined with, Greasy. This is who's sending message. It didn't have to sound like 
Mike instigated it because he, because he, I guess he couldn't take all the disrespect of his clothes being assaulted and, and being told about himself. And then he got that work. But like, it was necessary. He needed to feel what he was going to feel. So the next question is mine. It says, as Mike sat waiting for Malia, I couldn't help but wonder how many he dogged out over the years. What was Mike like in his earlier days? I think he got a taste of his own medicine waiting at that table alone. I definitely. Um, <clears throat> some people don't believe in karma. Some people, are like, hey, I believe in karma. I, I definitely believe in the law of you. you get what you put out. My earlier days is Prince Michael. He's a boy, honey. He's a lover boy. You know, he out there breaking hearts and really not caring about anybody. Just the whole world, him, his whole world in Rose City, his family, everybody's community has been catering to him. He's had what he wanted when he wanted. So if that meant that somebody had a boyfriend and he was like, yeah, but I like her, then it was, you know, snap his fingers and people came running, baby. People got in line. Whatever Prince Michael wanted, Prince Michael had. So now he's feeling what it feels like to not just be able to, to, to clip his fingers or snap his fingers and be able to summon somebody like, you know? So yeah, Mike has not been a very nice guy. He's, I mean, we talked about that in a few chapters ago where Malia and um, Tan went to Rocky Butte and she says that she was there for the prom night and how she spent her prom night in the bathroom crying because uh, she found that Mike had texted some other girl, Crystal, whoever, that he was going to be spending prom at her house. He was in it with her. And so Malia was in the bathroom crying. And her girl was like, come on out, girl. Just, and they, you know, the book talked about Mike was out there cutting a two-step, honey. He, he was getting Dougie, baby. He was like, teach me how to Dougie. Like, he was doing all of that. And Malia was hurt. You know, yeah, baby. Don't put that off. I don't know how to act. Um, I just, I don't. Um, but, you know, she's in there crying. And he's on the dance floor just living it up. He has been very obsessed with himself. He doesn't think about other people's feelings. He thinks about himself. So for the first time in his life, he stood up, baby. He didn't even stood up. It didn't take all these years for God to really give him what he needed. But um, he's getting it. You know, he's been sitting at this table and he's about to get his face dumped. <laughs> what are your ladies' thoughts on that? Yeah, I agree. And I think he's classic mama's boy, you know? And with if you take away the title of mom, it's just a female. A female putting on you, giving you everything you want, never saying no, here at your every beckoning call, you know? And when you, when you grow up like that, young boy to young man to a full grown man, you know, you just have this persona that women are supposed to do everything at my will, at my will, you know, whenever I want. And if they don't, I'm going to have a fit about it. And if you don't give me what I want, I'm going to call my mom and then she's going to make sure that either you give me what I want or she's going to find somebody else to give me what I want. Right. Classic mama's boy syndrome. I love that. Lady. Classic mama's boy syndrome. I'm a calm, right? I'm going to tell my mommy you're going to get in trouble. My boy, grow up. Bye. Um, let me read that again. What was Mike like in his earlier days? It seemed like, like you guys said, he was a mama's boy. He was Prince Michael. He, um, whatever he wanted, he got. Um, he, I think he was a player. I, nothing. I know he was a player. Um, and so, yeah, he did end up getting a taste of his own medicine. Um, I don't, I don't know if he stood up anybody in the past, but he's definitely been dogging women. And, um, you know, I think a taste of a true taste of his own medicine would be for him to fall in love and get his heart broke and have, you know, a girl do him the way he'd been doing women. That's that. That would be a true taste. But just getting this little, you know, this little sample right here. Um, he he needed that, it, it, and it probably was a bit of a reality check for him. Like, hold on, maybe I ain't what I what I thought. Um, <laughs> right? Like, um, hmm. 
maybe I'm not, you know, it, he was just so sure. I'm like, without even talking to her, like, that's a whole nother, you know, to just know. I mean, he got the suit, the gift, whatever. He going to, no, because I know she going to be here. Without even asking her himself or talking to her. Like me, I'm if I'm going somewhere, we we confirming these plans. We're going to plan it out, okay? I'm going to meet you at the restaurant or you come pick me up or however, you know. it. it not just, yeah, I'm going to get dressed and boom, boom, boom. She going to be there. Like, so he was feeling stupid and then to come back and have somebody eat his food and slam him. Um, <laughs> he just, he didn't know how to take it, I guess. <laughs> he didn't know how to take that. So, um, yeah, it, it's a sample, not a true taste, but a sample. He deserved it. He deserved it. All of it, all of it, and more.